Alright, so I watched this Dan Barker versus Randall Rouser Old Testament debate. And, uh, you know, Randall Rouser, as far as I'm concerned, right at the beginning, laid down the gauntlet, the most appropriate gauntlet to lay down. And as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't addressed during the debate or at all. Or at all. And it goes something like this. Once upon a time, Dan Barker was a fundamentalist Christian, the most, of the most hardcore type. When he deconverted from Christianity, and if you are an atheist listening to this, and you used to be a fundamentalist Christian, then you deconverted from Christianity. You did yourself no favors um, by deconverting. <laughs> Why not, Greg? Because God exists. So you didn't help yourself. No, you did yourself no favors. If you are like Dan Barker and you say, I deconverted from Christianity because I used my critical thinking skills and I decided that the earth isn't 6,000 years old, wow, <laughs> you know, I'm penetrating analysis, and other things that I was being sold weren't actually true, so I deconverted. Okay, and now you think of yourself as a paragon of critical thinking and intellectual you know, reason and rationality skills, but what he was basically arguing for was, you know, I'm the greatest critical thinker in the world and I've learned to use my reason and my rationality to make decisions, but yet I maintain that I have the right to interpret the Bible as if I'm an imbecile, <laughs> as if I can't piece two and two together at all. I swear to God that's what's really going on. And that's what the, the gauntlet that Randall Rouser laid down and never addressed. And this is endemic in the atheist community. There's a lot of atheists who deconverted and in general, they deconverted from types of Christianity that were pretty extreme in nature. Fundamentals Christianity. And they, they, part of the reason they left is that they, the binary thinking didn't suit them, but they have never abandoned it. Binary thinking, good, bad, black, white, right, wrong. Dan Barker brings it completely to the table when he is analyzing the, the Old Testament. He has reserved himself the right to analyze the Old Testament as if he has no re reasoning skills whatsoever. He still looks at it like he's a fundamentalist. And he, Randall Rouser brought that up and, that, and he never answered it. And that's a really important charge. Randall Rouser is what I call wussy Christian. What is a wussy Christian, Craig? I've explained this before. It's kind of like a progressive Christian, but I don't like using the word. Wussy Christian, you know what a wussy Christian is? Oh, God never commanded genocide. God would never do that. Why not? God is love. Yeah, it's wussy. You know, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be voting for Trump. Why not? Orange man is bad. Orange man is a very bad man. <laughs> That's really weak. It's wussy. I told you. <laughs> there was this. Yeah, I guess it's all touchy-feely and nice and let's hold hands, but, you know, all things being considered, I vastly prefer my form of man's man Christianity. What is man's man Christianity, Craig? You know, you know the drill. Usually in a southern accent, you come to my town, you wearing a mini skirt, you're going to burn in hell, sister. If you don't tie the appropriate tithes and offerings in the offering plate, you're going to burn in hell from now until the end of time. Hallelujah. Give him praise and glory in this house. Wow, it's hardcore, Craig. Yeah, it's real man Christianity. Man's man Christianity. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of neither. My only point is, as a wussy Christian, it is literally easy it is really easy to reconcile the, 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 the challenging scriptures in the Old Testament as a wussy Christian. It's simple. There's no cognitive dissonance at all. It need not even be done. You can pull, pull a chapter right out of the atheist playbook. Why does the Bible say this? I don't know. <laughs> wow, rocket science. I don't know. I didn't write the Bible. <laughs> I swear to God. It's really honestly that simple. I came to Christianity as an adult. And I was a 29-year-old man, and I had, you know, I wasn't the most reasonable person who ever walked the face of the earth, but I could put two and two together, and I could, you know, write my name and do things like that. And I was pretty much a sort of functioning human being and capable of thinking about things clearly. Now, what Dan Barker does, and I can tell you honestly, as a practicing adult, as a, as a fully functioning adult, if you come to Christianity, it is literally, there's no cognitive dissonance at all. Why? Because I'm not an idiot. I'm not, and neither is anybody listening to me, anyone listening to me, I'm trying to think, I'm thinking of all the people I know, if any of them are actually idiots, not, not that many, you know, not that many of you are idiots either, it's really literally easy to reconcile the, the, 
the challenging scriptures in the Old Testament if you're not an inerrantist. Why? Because you don't need to account for every stray sentence in the, of the Old Testament. You really don't, or even the New. You know, for the inerrantist, it poses a challenge, and that's why I don't think we should be engaging in those debates. Those, you know, the Old Testament is so violent debates. Why? Because there's only, those debates are basically gotchas, but those gotchas only work on literalists and inerrantists, people who are willing to defend the proposition that the Bible is inerrant. Because then you do have to account for every stray sentence of the Old Testament. You know, so you have to give a really good explanation as to why something is there. That's why those debates almost always the Christian loses. Because there's only one template of that debate. It either looks like the Christian is minimizing the atrocities. Usually it's the atrocities. There's a couple other scriptures that people complain about, atheists complain about, but normally it's the atrocities and the, you know, slavery, the Bible's a handbook on slavery in those debates. The Bible, basically all the Bible says is how to own and how to care for your slaves. Those debates do. But usually it's the atrocities. So there's only one way it can go for the practicing Christian. And the only reason it goes this way is because you are studiously trying to defend the Bible as inerrant. The Bible may very well be inerrant, be inerrant but it's not something you should be in the business of publicly trying to defend. Why? Because you're going to lose. That's why. And by extension, make us all look bad. You're going to lose. Because there's only two ways the debate can go. It either looks like you are minimizing atrocities or not clearly addressing what the text seems to clearly say. You're either not, you're not acknowledging what the text seems to clearly say, or you're minimizing the atrocity. One way or the other, they got you. So don't even go to the debate. Why? You lost. <laughs> you lost. The promise. Watch a couple of those, a bunch of those debates, and you lost. They got you. <laughs> they got, it doesn't matter how good you are. They got you. Why? Because it's easy to got you, you on that. You have to have a justification for the scripture that's literally perfect. It's not going it's not, it's not to happen. A lot of the justifications I've seen for certain scriptures are sketchy at best. They may be right, but they're a reach. And that's the first thing any normal person is going to notice. Well, you're really reaching on that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they're going to notice. So you aren't helping us. But this was different. Okay? Why was this different? Because Randall Rouser is a wussy Christian. I'm pretty sure he is not a, a literalist or an inerrantist. Thus, the only mistake he made, and Dan Barker actually started out this debate by doing us the profound favor of framing this question intelligent, intelligently and clearly and reasonably. He asked the question in a way as if he were a Christian trying to hear from God. He said, let's say I'm a practicing Christian trying to hear from God. How do I decide what God is saying through the Bible. And here's my actual answer as a reasonable human being and a practicing Christian who tries to hear from God every single solitary day of my life. It's easy. Bang! It's easy. There is no cognitive dissonance whatsoever if you intelligent human being. I've never had one ounce of confusion. Yes, there's some weird scriptures in the Old Testament. As a practicing Christian, if you're pray, pray, prayerfully considering the Bible, they don't throw you. For example, the one where there's, you know, God has commanded you to kill everybody. Uh, what is it, the Samuel one they always debate about? And there's an out that is also biblical in nature. There's wisdom in a multitude of counselors that's from the Bible. In other words, run it by a whole bunch of people you know. If, you are, if you're friends with a lot of smart, you know, thoughtful Christians who are prayed up, you know, run it by them. I really think God's telling me to kill everybody in that CVS. What do you guys think? <laughs> no, Greg, I really don't. Go back into the prayer closet, Greg. I'm pretty sure that's not God. You guys sure? You sure on that? You know, it's real. God, God, a strong feeling in prayer that should kill everyone in the CVS. No, I really don't think that's God talking to you. Well, he said it to Samuel, or Samuel said it to Saul, or whatever. Um, they'll tell you, well, that was really context specific. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, my bad. my bad. So you don't think God's telling me to kill everyone in the CVS? No. Okay, my bad. All right, fine. Then I won't do it. Go back into the prayer closet and keep praying. It's really easy. There's actually no confusion at all if you're a halfway intelligent human being. So if Dan Barker was serious and he were actually prayerfully considering the Bible, it's not that much of a challenge. It's really not. And, and Randall Rouser did, the only thing that Randall Rouser did wrong is he didn't actually fully own the position of wussy Christian. He did do some hand-wringing and like, let me turn myself into pretzels to try and justify this particular scripture. If I remember the debate correctly, it's been a while since I listened to it at this point. You know, they went to the, uh, 
the by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down. They went to that scripture, that particular passage, which is the one, that's that actual, that song, you might know it. Sublime's done a version of it. The best version is on uh, Jimmy Cliff, The Heart of the Commons. Killer. The killer, I forget which, what the actual band, maybe the Deftones. That doesn't sound right. I don't remember what the actual band was who does the original cover on the Jimmy Cliff, The Heart of the Commons version. Sublime does a cover, and then there was a popular version in England um, in the 70, late 70s that actually charted. That song is from that particular song. Now, that's the only passage of the Psalms that I know for certain that every atheist knows. Blessed is the man, happy is the man who smashes their head against the stones. Every single atheist knows that scripture is in the Bible. But that's not the only scripture in the Old Testament. <laughs> I swear to God. And Randall Rouser did make the mistake. See, if you're a wussy Christian, it's a really powerful position. You don't have to turn yourself into knots to, to reconcile that scripture. You don't come have to come up with these twisted justifications for it. Matter of fact, if you actually go and read the psalm, that passage seems to come out of nowhere. It doesn't seem organic to the text at all. It's kind of, and that happens a lot in the Bible, by the way. That's why I'm not married to the idea that the Bible's inerrant. Why? Because there are some passages that seem to come out of nowhere. And that's one of them. The, the, the rest of the psalm is about, you know, and then we wept when we remembered Zion. For the wicked carried us away. Captivity require from us a song. Happy is the man who smashes their head against the stone. It kind of goes like that. I swear to God, that's how it happens. I swear to God, that's exactly how it happens when you're reading it. It's like, it's like this lament. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the guy just turns real dark. He's like, happy is the man who smashes their head against the stone. <laughs> it's almost as if, you know, somebody stopped writing, went and got into a fight with his wife and came back and got a lot angry. That's how, that's how it re actually organically reads. There isn't really a context to that line in the actual Psalms. At least as far as I was concerned, there isn't. And I've checked it out. But the only thing I know for certain is that every single solitary atheist and anti-theist knows that particular psalm is in that particular verse is in the old, is in the psalms. The psalms are one of the easiest things to reconcile. They're one of the easiest things to actually prayerfully consider and hear from God. Why? Because they're actually really human and really engaging and really involving. In the same way Randall Rouser was trying to argue as art is. You let it get inside of you and see if it resonates. It's not that complicated to see if you think God is speaking to you through it. You, you, you live with it. You prayerfully consider it. So that verse, yeah, my wife just called. So I'll probably make this part one and then part two will be a follow-up. Um, that verse, got to go move groceries. You know how, you know the drill. Uh, you don't? Well, if any of you are married, you know the drill. Like, ah, come down here, munch of groceries. <laughs> no, that's not 70's voice. That's my wife's voice. Um, but that's the deal. The, the, for the actual practicing Christian, there is no cognitive dissonance whatsoever. It is really, really easy to prayerfully consider the Bible and decide as a perfectly capable, rational adult if God is in, what God is intending through any given scripture. How? The same way you resonate with other things. You let it get inside of you, and you let it speak to you, you know? And what R Randall Rouser was comparing it to Shakespeare, and that's the exact same place that scriptures has to reach us. That's the exact same place that religion has to be, ultimately, if it is to be a successful uh, of use to you in your life. It has to speak to you the same way art does, resonate on the same plane, just receive it the same way. It's not that complicated at all. You know, it's really not. So I'll, I'll make a part two to this. You know, it's too bad I got interrupted because I was really enjoying myself. But there you have it, kids. There'll be a follow-up coming soon. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>